This is Trevor Sports Television from London. Afternoon. As tributes continue to rail in for the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, who died yesterday, aged 99. We all here at Trevor Sports will leave our deepest condolences to his uh, wife, the Queen, and the entire royal family for such a devastating loss. Um, having taken part in the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, um, this is a, a, a definitely a, a very sad day for all of us in the country. We here at Trevor Sports will return you back to our usual broadcasting of course, um, the Duke of Edinburgh's wife, the Queen, was always a huge fan of horse racing. It's only fitting that we have the Grand National for us. But for more of us on Trevor Sports, thank you very much and we'll see you again soon. Well, now on Trevor Sports, the time is 12.30 and it's time for Grand National Grandstand. Introduced by Trev Lynham. Greatest day for horse racing is the Grand National, and it's back this year, and it's back and better than ever. A surprise hit for Trevor Sports last year, the virtual Grand National of 2020 is the second most watched video in the Trevor Sports library. This afternoon, we're going back to Aintree once again to see who is going to be the winner the Grand National virtually for 2021. We've got a new Trevor O'Sullivan in the commentary box, it's the same old entry, the same old drama and we, we, one thing we'll be sure of today is we won't have the same old winner because this time last year's winner is Tiger Roll. Well, he's not racing. Looks to maintain it well, but it'll be Tiger Roll that's going to hold up that season and is going to win the Grand National here at Aintree for 2020. Excellent bit of work, excellent, excellent racing. And exclusively this afternoon, Trevor Walker is going to reveal the next Formula One project that you will be seeing in Trevor Sports over the next few coming weeks and months. A brand new season of Grand Prix. Football Focus today, we've got a full review of the Premier League games that took place in match day 31, including the big showdown between Tottenham Hotspur and Manchester United with comprehensive highlights. So here is the running order for Grandstand this afternoon. Of course, we will kick off very shortly with football focus Premier League highlights and we'll have uh, extended highlights of Tottenham versus Manchester United. Uh, we'll then move over to our motorsport project for the next Formula 1 series and what can you expect on Grand Prix this year on Trevor Sports. Our main event, and hopefully this is why you're joining us, is the 2021 Virtual Grand National from Aintree. We've got a new Trevor O'Sullivan ready to bring us all the action. You know that can mean one thing. No more as well, bingo. 
So we've got lots to bring you on this packed episode uh, this afternoon. For those that are tuning in for the football, well, that's where we're going to start our focus on football. And over to Trevor Lineker, who's back in the studio in London for Football Focus. Thank you, Trev. The Premier League takes centre stage again this weekend. Seven games to go and a five-way title race. Quite unbelievable to think it. Guess that's uh, evolution for you in the pro sense. Uh, let's start off with our roundup of that championship race between the opening top five, and we start with the big game that took place in the evening between Tottenham Hotspur and Manchester United. And Song Young Min will take the first corner of the match. Spurs with five players inside the Manchester United penalty area. And it's come to Kane. Oh, it's a good save by Henderson. Corner was floated in. And somehow Harry Kane remained unmarked. And Harry Maguire will feel he's got away with it. He's been saved by his goalkeeper there. All the way across to Luke Shaw. Lucas Mora. Dele Alley. Inside to Sergio Ayer with a crossing opportunity. There is a cross. Tomane with another firm handy ray. Dele Alley gets something to it. Back to Sergio Ayer. Son. Holberg. Kane, 1-0. A delightful exchange of passes. And then eventually Kane had the chance. And you know the result. Well, there wasn't much Dean Henderson can do when the chance arose. Sergio Ayer winning the ball back and this was it, exchange of passes from Song to Holbo back into Kane it opened Manchester United's defence up oh, given half a chance Harry Kane is going to strike in the form he has been this season Rashford's here is Luke Shaw Fred. Dan James. Oh, Anthony Martial. Oh, yeah, it's a bounce on the post twice. And it's got away. How unlucky can you get? Manchester United so close to equalising. Off the post. Twice and away. Oh. Forced Manchester United to uh, force the play a bit more to Tottenham. May it suit Spurs on the counter attack. Deli Ali to Lucas Moura. Over the top to Ben Davis, who's made an excellent run from left back. Up against Aaron Wambisaka. Welshman against Englishman. Holberg. Son. Deli Ali. Son. Still Son! Well, the sort of form that Son has. He wondered if this was his chance. United unable to clear it. Son just couldn't quite curl in inside the post. That's unlucky. Spurs with a lead and a good uh, value for it, one would have to say. This is Son again. Kane. Deli Alley on the left foot, but it is not going to worry Dean Henderson, who is deeply frustrated at the moment at will. Tottenham Hotspur are carving through Manchester United. A match really which either side knows could decide the championship. That's criminal defending. Martial gets the flick on but it finds a Tottenham Hotspur player. The real world to Deli Alley. So Jouier. Solskjaer do at half time. Try and reinvigorate Manchester United. 
They've only really got the uh, Premier League and the Champions League to fight for now. Here's Son. Kane. Two now! Kane with the space and the finish. And the difference between the two sides at the moment is a quality centre forward. And Tottenham Hotspur's Harry Kane is quality personified. Back to goal. On the left foot. Pass Henderson. This evening Spurs are starting to take control of this one. Eric Bay couldn't get there. The post this time proving the luck perhaps is with Tottenham Hotspur. But great work to fend off Eric Bay on the left foot. And Harry Kane now is on a perfect hat trick. Just playing time added on for stoppages. Anthony Martial for Manchester United who's got space and he was caught by all of your world and United will have a free kick and, uh, Eric Dyer was right behind all of your world so that is why Bruno Fernandes territory it's shade to the cup final and it's a really good block by the wall Fernandez so deadly from this range hasn't quite been able to discover that uh, free kick joie de vie that he's had before is Dyer winks out wide to Ben Davis Sons across to Delhi Alley Kane Bruno Fernandes with a delightful ball through to Anthony Martial who goes on good save well should Martial have done better ran himself through he went on the left foot and it's easy for Lloris and I think that's a big big chance missed Deli Ali options out wide and Serge Aurier into Deli Ali now Holberg Kane oh so often from that position when he does have the ability to turn he is deadly Harry Kane on this situation it's a let off for Manchester United here's Aaron Wan-Bissaka That's a poor pass. Son. Deli Ali. Oh! How did that not settle it? Deli Ali threw on the mistake. And uh, his finish wasn't quite there. That's unlucky for Spurs. And. Uh, really have in the last few weeks hit form just at the right time here's Martial Mason Greenwood trying to go for a shot I think from distance here's Son Kane caught late by Maguire and the booking for the Manchester United captain just to confound the misery of a disastrous day a trip to North London this evening the men in red may want to forget Spurs have definitely had the measure of them tonight Liverpool knew it would be a tricky fi fixture at home to play Aston Villa they got the perfect start in the end I love the exchange of passes allowed Mo Salah to find himself through and on the right foot this time his finish was too good to beat Martinez and put Liverpool ahead 
Well, the good football arrived from Liverpool when a mistake was pounced on. Roberto Firmino sprayed the ball out wide to Mo Salah, whose lovely jinking run called out Tyrone Mings and brought him down. Referee pointed straight to the spot and Liverpool had a chance to double their advantage. Mo Salah this season has been pretty much immaculate from the spot and perhaps he's hit his most emph emphatic penalty of the season so far. While well, Martinez was set the wrong way, it was just about perfect. But there was a scare for Liverpool as Aston Villa brought themselves back in the second half. A lovely little by El Ghazi found Ross Barkley through, curling left footed strike that found its way in and Villa got one back. And got tense towards the end, but it is definitely the result Liverpool leads if they are to keep up their challenge this season. An important three points. Manchester City dominated the game against Leeds United who are worryingly teetering towards a relegation dogfight. For Manchester for Manchester City, Riyad Mahrez's effort was the opening goal for them. A great curling strike was the opening moment five minutes into the contest. But from there, Manchester City weren't able to add a second goal, despite having opportunities. Raheem Sterling's left foot just pulling them wide. And it's been Manchester City's inconsistency in front of goal that are the concerns. With Sergio Aguero leaving them, they, the mantra will arrive perhaps to another player to do this. Phil Foden found chances. Manchester City didn't take them, but in the end held on for a 1-0 win, and it keeps them in the title race. West Ham have been in real improvers this season, and they played on an absolute classic at the London Stadium, taking on Leicester City. We're hoping to confirm their stamp as title challenges. That was until Jesse Lingard broke through a mistake when Soyan Chu and Johnny Evans, his former Manchester United teammate, failed to clear the ball, Lingard taking hold of it. And then an absolutely brilliant strike arrived to bring Leicester City level. Wilfred and Didi's hit might just be the best goal you're going to see this weekend. An unstoppable strike and really is a contender potentially for goal of the season. But it won't count for much in the end because as a result of the actions, West Ham got themselves back into the game. Jesse Lingard stole the ball of Yuri Tielemans, played through a 50-50 ball in which Soy and Chu controlled. Michael Antonio stole, suddenly found himself one-on-one. -on -one. Schmeichel committed himself. Michael Antonio provided an absolutely textbook finish to lob the ball over the Leicester City goalkeeper. And in the second half that continued, West Ham continued to make chances. And in the end, it was a lovely cross that was brilliantly placed in the end by Aaron Creswell. Lanzini with the perfect header, 3-1 to West Ham United. Some critics have said this might be Leicester City's knockout of the title race, but they did get themselves back into it late in the contest. James Madison's fantastic free kick fired past the wall, and that pretty much was the golden stroke in the game. And as far as the contest went, West Ham's were worthy winners. Leicester City showed a bit of their jet lag from their European exploits. The Hammers delighted with the win. Leicester City, their Champions League hopes have taken a real dent. As for the Hammers, Michael Antonio has shone today. Well, after all of those uh, results that have taken place, uh, as this title race looks like this, Spurs take a lead. They've got a uh, point advantage over Liverpool up into second. Manchester United and Manchester City both tied on 63 points. Manchester United have a vast superior goal difference, it must be said. Leicester City drop four points back, so they do find themselves no longer in contention for the Champions League. And with uh, seven games to go, uh, we will have to result in a couple of slip-ups. So they're so out of their hands as things stand. Uh, so that's the uh, title race as it stands up. And uh, who's your choice from here? Well, uh, we'll have to get a betting man in, and uh, it's always a day for a bet. Uh, but what about the rest of it? Well, here are the rest of the games before we give you a full uh, Premier League wrap-up. In the relegation dogfight, Burnley might have done themselves a big favour when a emphatic home win over Newcastle United. The FA Cup semi-finalists really asking the question just what they did to get there, especially in the opening moment where Barnes latched onto a lovely through ball and occasionally guided his left-footed volley all the way past Carl Darlow. One became two later on as the Newcastle United defence stared at each other in sixes and sevens. Great exchange of passing, lovely effort by Barnes to found Goodmanson's. His first touch wasn't the great, but Carl Darlow had made the, goal, the goalkeeper's mistake of charging out and as a result Goodmanson did just enough to lift it over him. And then there was an opportunity for a third goal, which Barnes took with absolute aplomb, controlling the ball beautifully and finishing over Darlow. Had a disastrous day, 
especially with the football flying over his head. The fourth goal was Route 1, but the control that to do so this was just spectacular. Ball into Chris Woods, whose perfect header back there to Jay Rodriguez allowed the one two to go through just perfectly. One and one with Darlo, and there it is for the fourth goal. You know, when the Premier League first started, that would have been a contender for goal of the season. As a result, it's the result of the season for Burnley and real troubles for Newcastle United. Sam Allardyce were hoping this was the moment he could get his West Bromwich Albion side out of their relegation dogfight. Southampton knew they had to produce the result to make sure they weren't involved in it. And after a booked attempt by Johnston to save an effort from Ryan Bertrand, the ball in the end did trickle over the line. And from there, Southampton never looked back. There was a moment in which West Brom caught Southampton on the counter-attack at home when Diangi found himself through and this excellent strike beats Foster at the near post. West Bromwich Albion were hoping for something special. West Bromwich Albion were hoping for something special, but late in the day, a delightful through ball eventually found Danny Ings that was able to finish with a real aplomb. A great goal that was. 2-1 to Southampton. And that's how it finished in the end. Southampton, delighted with that victory, probably takes them out of the relegation dogfight this season. Fulham and Wolverhampton Wanderers had a pretty dull nil-nil draw, but it was the poor finishing of Wolverhampton Wanderers that's been a constant source of menace. Raul Jimenez is through and denied by the foot there of Ariola, the French goalkeeper, making a fine stop. And as the chances continued to arrive, Pedro Nito's effort here getting saved again by Ariola. It was the Fulham goalkeeper that continued to use save after save, even when his defence let him down. Daniel Podence found himself through with the best chance, but he struck the post late in the contest. And that's how the match finished. Goalless between the two. Doesn't really help Fulham. Doesn't really keep Wolves completely out of the relegation battle, that's for sure. Brighton knew that their chances of Premier League size were slipping unless they could get a big result to Everton, but that wasn't what happened, especially when there was differing defending by Ben White. And as a result, Seamus Coleman was able to go and score. Sure, something Ben White won't want to watch again. A brilliant free kick in the end by Luca Digne settled the contest in the second half. An unstoppable strike for Everton, who have all but confirmed Brighton Hove Albion's relegation from the Premier League after this result. Chelsea went away to Crystal Palace, West London versus South London, a fiery affair, but Chelsea showed no jet lag after their 3-1 win against Olympiacos. Rhys James's cross was hit in with Tammy Abraham, and Frank Lampard's ability to change the squad around Drew's dividends, as this Chelsea side put on a fine performance. Chelsea were able to get two after a long ball over the top, Tammy Abraham broke the offside trail back, had the control, had the coolness of mind to also produce a cool finish, beating Vincent Gator at his near post. Certainly something the Crystal Palace goalkeeper won't want to see again. And the misery for the Eagles was compounded again when Timo Werner broke himself three, was able to march away from Kuyate, had the wherewithal to pass the ball all the way across to Ngolo Kante, who scored a rare goal this season. And as a result, Chelsea were comfortable winners, three goals to nil. They're going away to Limbiakos next, and with recent results, they have real hope of reaching a Champions League semi-final, which is their only path back, it looks like, this season. Arsenal and Sheffield United was about as mid-table as you could get for one, and as about as worrying as you could get for the other. Arsenal and their lonely Martin Odegaard got the opening get, as Arsenal looked to try and get themselves out of their mid-table hundred. As for Sheffield United, a disastrous 2021 was lightened here by Flex Free Kick. But as a result the, of the recent results for Sheffield United, their week win last week to Leeds United was their first of this calendar year. Arsenal, though, made sure that that was all the wins they were going to get, especially this excellent move and change with Lacazette's wonderful pass and this wonderful finish by Aubameyang, absolutely smashing the ball past the goalkeeper. A fine goal that, definitely one that have you jumping head over heels. Two became three and this was settled in the end after a good exchange of passing. Aubameyang had the wherewithal to play in Emil Smith-Rowe who hit the ball first time and it absolutely beat the goalkeeper with real ferocity at the near post. A great result for Arsenal. We're starting to find a bit of form this season. Sheffield United have got a lot to worry about. The championship potentially may Beckham. Well, after all those results, here is what the uh, Premier League uh, looks like after another fascinating weekend. 
Spurs' big win over Manchester United stands out among them. Fulham Wolves with the only 0-0 draw. Well, many draws uh, in this uh, Premier League season at all. Most of these are finding a result. Burnley with the biggest win in the Premier League. And uh, that's not something we've said for a while. Bottom half of the table is confirmed. Sheffield United, Fulham and Brighton are hanging on for their dear lives. West Brom have just teetered out despite their results. Leeds United have got to be worried. They're floating just above. Southampton look to be safe at 36 points. Burnley themselves might think they have done enough. Um, but Wolves, Newcastle and Crystal Palace have all got to be careful. Top of the Premier League we've been through. And uh, confirmation Spurs are Premier League leaders as we head into FA Cup semi-final weekend. Uh, Leicester City just ahead of Everton who are only ahead of Chelsea on goal scored. Um, with their identical goal difference and uh, that should be really fascinating between those two uh, West Ham's win moves them one closer to Aston Villa well, they look well ahead of Arsenal that's still on 38 points this season well it's all building to an absolute crescendo and of course more of the football will continue on Trevor's Sports we've got Sports Light and the return of the uh, second leg and highlights of that Bayern Munich hosting Manchester United and uh, Olympiacos hosting Chelsea. Two games we're going to be fo focusing on should be absolute classics. And of course, next weekend, Grandstand will be hosted by Trev exclusively on two FA Cup semi-finals. Should be an absolutely spellbinding uh, week for football and hope you'll join us for that. But speaking of the art of spellbinding, what if we could go back in time and change something? Over to Trevor to announce our next Grand Prix project. Well, thank you for that as the uh, Premier League title race hots up. What about motor racing? Well, uh, we talked about what our reveal for what will be the Grand Prix project this year on Trevor's Sports. You've seen us before delve in and out of the world of Formula One. Never quite with the commitment, perhaps, as we should. For those of you that have been following the rise of Raven West on the CW Virtual Sports Commentators channel, you might have seen us, but for those who haven't, Trevor Walker will narrate. This is what we're going to focus on for this season. We're going to re-1 the 1994 season and ask the question, if Senna was still alive, who would have been world champion that year? Schumacher or Senna? Those that know rank Ayrton Senna as the greatest racing driver of all time. The charismatic committed mid-racer was sadly lost to us far too soon and had an astounding Formula 1 career. In 1984, in Ayrton Senna's debut season, he very nearly won a Grand Prix for the unfancied Tolman team at Monaco, denied in the end by Alan Prost and the race being called off in a stunning performance. In the years that followed, Ayrton Senna was to race in the John Player Special Lotus, where he would come close to challenging for the championship in a very uncompetitive car. Senna's big break arrived in 1988, where he joined McLaren alongside Formula 1 world champion Alain Prost. The two duked it out in two classic seasons in which Senna won his first world championship in 1988. The following season, though, friction started to develop between the two men, and the two teammates fell out, and it all came to head in Suzuka in 1989, where both collided into one another. Senna was pushed to continue off the track. Prost walked off. Stewart's deemed that Senna had unfairly restarted the track where he'd gone off and Alan Prost was claimed world champion. The following season Prost joined Ferrari and from there the showdown between the two went to the final race of the season also at Suzuka where this time Ayrton Senna drove into Alan Prost in the first corner and would claim his second world championship robbing Alan Prost. 1991 saw the rise of Williams for McLaren. Ayrton Senna was world champion, but behind him was Red 5 and Nigel Mansell, that despite early gearbox problem, proved to be a real challenge. And in 92, the Williams overtook the McLaren. Senna had to watch as Nigel Mansell romped home for the championship, but there was always that brilliant Monaco Grand Prix in which Senna held off Mansell for two laps, two of the most extraordinary amounts of racing we've ever seen. The following season, Senna had an uncompetitive McLaren to race in, but showed us why he was regarded as the wet weather master, who was stunning to play at Donington, where he went from 5th to 1st in the first lap and never looked back in the rain. 
It was at the end of that season Alan Prost left Williams and retired from Formula 1. Senna and him patched things up and Senna had his big opening to race with the team that he desired to race for the past three seasons. He'd signed for Williams and he was alongside Damon Hill. The two of them were the two chosen drivers of Frank Williams to move forwards. But an FIA ruling meant that Williams' FW16 was robbed of all its electrical aids, lost its traction control, it lost everything about it which made it a stand about a class above the rest. And the 94 season was a difficult one for Ed and Senna. Out of the first two races and watching Schumacher go ahead, Senna was pushing harder as he ever could. Sadly, tragedy arrived in Imola. Ed and Senna was sadly killed in that race and we will never know if in the Williams side whether he would have been able to have truly challenged for the championship that season. In the end it was Damon Hill that stood up and challenged Michael Schumacher that year. In one of the most dramatic Formula 1 World Championships it went down to the final race in Adelaide when Schumacher and Damon Hill collided. Both went out of the race and Schumacher won the World Championship that season by one solitary point. The question always remains, if Senna hadn't been killed, would he have won the World Championship that season? Would have Michael Schumacher and the Benetton side, would they have been able to win it? Well, there's only one way to find out, and for that, we're going to archive some brilliant mods in Grand Prix 4. the 1994 season rerun well that's happening very shortly keep an eye out for your notifications and make sure you are subscribed and you've got the bell because that's when we'll be bringing up the next results well that has been um, really interesting for us to see what's going to happen but the main event this afternoon is the Grand National uh, it's a four and a half mile course that these horses 40 of them are going to run today um, here are the top 10 let's bring you the odds and let you go through with them and uh, Volcanic Lion will be the 7-2 favourite along with the Jaya Comfrac also sitting at 15-2 to two. Sam Twiston Davis and Sean Flanagan uh, sitting on that uh, bet for an each way we've been asked about this potentially who where we would go good money could be potentially spent on your fifth and your sixth so there's a Mizia Spider trained by Paul Townsend and Bernstein Eyed by Fergus Gillard is also that could be another option to do uh, 28 to 1 uh, Commodore Zeus and Puzzle Sabre have also been picked out as the potential favourites for the Grand National well, the old course here at Aintree has always been a special occasion. It's always been a, a privilege to come here and bring you the coverage year upon year. Last year, there was a little bit of criticism, dare we say, towards the voice of the Grand National. So, uh, we have made a slight change. And ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you a brand new Trevor O'Sullivan who is going to take us through all faulty runners and riders and the race itself. Over to you, Trevor. Thank you, Trevor, and welcome along to Aintree for the 2021 Randox Health Grand National. Let's have a look at the 40 runners and riders. Uh, for Canting Lion, it's a 72 favourite. Yana Comfort at 15 to 2. Uh, down the field, you've got Munson Back Cresto at 16s, McDougal Strike at 20s, Commander Zias and Puzzle Sabre at 28 to 1, and Spick Model as well. Um, 6 Foy Sep is a 50 to 1 chance. Onside, Demand Pegasus and European Riverman. And uh, further up down in the field, you've got Dancer to See at 66s, and then you've got Scott and Bolden early in the launch, who you may remember running the Devon National without any great success. Six Voice Sep actually fell in the race, uh, the, that same race. And, uh, and then you've got uh, horses like Stop Knock and Faguna Nice and Spick Model and Betty Hill Minx and, uh, and Jovial Grease. All those runners there, as you can see, all 100 to 1 chances. So Robbie Supple, the starter, has them all in line. They're under starter's orders with a 2021 manure of the Grand Luxelf Grand National. And off we go. Away we go. Go, go, go as we start the first 
First part of the race, and it's Commander Zeus who's the first to show from Munson MacCresta, then Jovial Grease, Stop Knock is there too, Great Crescent is there too, and Morehouse Chippy. Hurling and Launch is there, and Bernstein Hyde, and Hurling and Launch. So they come across the Melling Road, they've gone across the Melling Road rather, and now they're about to leave the ground for the first of 30 fences, and it's uh, Commander Zeus and Munson MacCresta who are jumping together. Um, with similar colours from Stop Knock and Middleton Hype and Jovial Grease and Bernstein Hyde, they're all over the first. Now they come to the second fence, and it's the same too. Munch and Backcrester from Commander Zeus and Stop Knock, and we've lost one there. Monsieur Spider has gone at the second. We come to the third, which is an open ditch. Munch and Crester is still the leader from Commander Zeus, Stop Knock and Middleton Hype. And, uh, and we've lost another one at the back there. We've lost Yarva Confrank. Yarva Confrank has gone at the open ditch. Here comes. Uh, Munch and back Crestor as he comes towards the fourth in the lead from Commander Zeus and Stop Knock and Middleton Hyde, Jovial Grease, Bernstein Hyde and Great Cassettes. Towards the back we've got Lamzadi, Montrap Attic, Fortuna Nice and Dimension Roxy the back marker as they come to the one before Beaches and it's Munch and back uh, Crestor over it from Commander Zeus and Stop Knock and Middleton Hyde. Then comes Bernstein Hyde and Jovial Grease uh, and Merlin and Morch. Still the back marker is Montrapatic as they come to Beaches Brook for the first time. And there's quite a number of good horses left in there. Two gone so far as we come to the sixth, the Beaches Brook fence. And over they go and we've lost uh, Morehouse Chippy. Morehouse Chippy has gone at the Beaches Brook. So Beaches Brook has claimed a victim on the first circuit. Morehouse Chippy has gone. So Foyne Haven is the next up for the other 37 wannabes who might want to win this race. And at the moment at the front it's Commander Zeech leading from Munson Mac Cresta. Stop Knock and Middleton Hyde. Uh, Bernstein Hyde is now up into fifth position alongside Jovial Grease. Then comes Spindley Cross and Hurling and Launch. We come to the canal turn, a 90 degree angle fence. Very difficult, and we've lost, uh, I'm afraid we've lost an, uh, one at the canal there, and it's, um, and it's uh, Jovial Grease who's gone at the uh, canal turn. They're now, the leader's now striding towards Valentine's, and the, and the top two, Munson Mac Crestor and Commander Zeech, are all over that one fine. Then comes the Middleton Hype and Stop Knock. And everyone's all over that one safely. 35 still, st 30, 36 still standing as they all jump the next. And we've lost one there. And the favourite is gone. Vulcan, Vulcanite Lion has gone at that one. Now the open ditch. 30, 34 left in the race here as we come to that open ditch. And all the leaders got over that safely. But we've lost Daniel Corner at the ditch. So now we come to the... 12th fence in the race. 12th fence in the race. Commander Zeech leading over it from Munson MacCrestor and Bernstein Hyde. Then comes Middleton Hype. Stop Knock. Hurling and Launch. Finley Cross. Environment Centre. Grey Cliff Sense, rather. Spick Muddle. And Six Voice Sep and Puzzle Sabre. Towards the back, we've got Rukina Nice. Dance of the Sea. Uh, Lamps Abbey. Prima Fliga. Dimension Roxy, and the last uh, horse at the moment is Blancurdy Presence. Last of the of all at the moment. And also, we've lost Suburban Nods, uh, Nods Berber down the field as well. So, we're coming round to the home straight and to the walls of the stands. There's a line of four fences, and that will conclude with uh, the chair and the water drum, both of which are taken just once in the race. Uh, but we've got two fences preceding that, and this is fence number 13, and a little bit of a peck on landing there by the leader, Commodore Sears, uh, Commander Sears rather, who's now lost the lead to Munson Mac Crester. Uh, Middleton Hype is in third place. Bernstein Hyde is taking close order in fourth. Then comes Spindley Cross and Stop Knock. One credit presence is still the back marker, incidentally, as they now come to the 14th fence, and they're all over that one safely. Well, the leaders are anyway, and the rest of the field are getting over that one okay. And uh, it's still Munson Back Creston. Uh, Crestor Robert leading from Commander Zeus and Middleton Hype from Bernstein Hype. Uh, still one Cody Crescent is the back marker as they come to the chair, the tallest fence in the national, at five foot two inches tall. Over they all go, and they're all over that one safely, apart from one, and that is European Riverman. European Riverman has gone at the chair. They're now coming towards the water, charging towards the water. It's Commodore, it's Commander Zeech leading from Munson Mac Cresta. Then comes Bernstein High, Middleton Hull, uh, Middleton High rather, uh, Finley Cross, Hurling and Launch, Stop Knock. Environment Centre, Breaker Sense, Speak Model, Savaro Sandem, 
Manana Handsome, Puzzle Sabre, Six Void Set, Daman Pegasus, Garten Bold, Samana, Sam's Painter rather, uh, Montraf Acid, Akamana, McDougal Strike, Vitey Hill Mix, Beachcraft Stop, Baron Milak, Faguna Nice, Super Panic, Lamps Abbey, Bang Owners, Mamoon Beach, Dance of the Sea, Prima for Ego, Dimension Roxy and Bun Cody Presence, a back marker, they've crossed the Melling Road, coming up to the 17th fence in the race, still pointing left in, and uh, the leaders jump that one safely, and we've lost to number one, we've lost to number one, and we've lost Grey Cliff Sense at the 17th fence, coming towards the 18th fence, and it's Commander Seach who leads from Munson Back Crester and Bernstein Hyde, and Middleton Hype and Finley Cross, Stop Knock is still there as well, in good uh, good, uh, good order as well, still in touch with the leaders, we come to the ditch, that's the 19th fence, and they're all over that one safely, the leaders, still Commander uh, Zeus leading there, from Munson Back Presto and Bernstein Hyde, uh, Middleton Hype and Finley Cross, we come to the 20th fence in the race, and we've lost the number one, Finley Cross has gone, one of the leaders is out! One of the leaders is out. Finley Cross is gone. A fancied horse, he's gone. So Connor Dorsey is still leading. And he's still leading there from Munson Matt Creston and Bernstein Idas. They take the one before Beaches. And the rest of the field are over. The rest of the field are over that one. And it's still Command Commodore Zich, Commander Zich as he comes to use, who's come to the Beaches Broke Fence for the second and final time. Munson back Crestor is there too. They take that fence and over the leaders go. And the rest of the field are now streaming over Beaches Brook. And I think everybody who survived is still has jumped it very well. Meanwhile, with the leaders. Commander Zich is still leading from Munson Mac Crestor and Middleton Hyde from Bernstein Hyde and Environment Centre. Hurley and Warnish is there too. Speak Muddle, Stop Knock, Manana Hanson, Six Boy Sep. And we've lost Amana towards the back at, at Foyne Avon. And now we come to the canal turn. And it's still Commander Zeus who's still leading from Middleton Hyde who's now moved into second place. And it's going to be very, very tight now. Who's going to win this race? It's still a very wide open race. Munson Back Crestor has dropped to third. They're all over the canal turn. They're now at Valentine Brook. And again, the leaders get over that one fantastically well. Fantastic race we're in for now. And still anyone's race. It's still Commander Zeus who's leading from Middleton Hype and Munson Back Crestor. They're all over that fly from home fence. And it's going to be a very close thing now the back marker is still one credit presence in Dimension Roxy the open ditch fourth from home uh, Commander Zeech is now lost the lead to Munson back Cresta then comes Middleton Hype Hurley and Launch Environment Centre Stop Knock and Spick Model and Demand Pegasus has now moved in with an opportunity three out in the National and it's coming up Commander Zeech still leading from Munson back Cresta Stop Knock is now making significant progress uh, coming through there on the, towards the outside and also Demand Pegasus is there too so they cross the melee row, two to jump Commander Zeus she's led practically alongside uh, Munson Mac Crestia, he's still the leader but Demand Pegasus is making brilliant progress and he's flying for the leader and number 11, 6 Foy Sep who fell into Devon National two months ago is now taking the lead on the outside there as you can see and he's got a length advantage from Commander Zeech and Demand Pegasus in third Stotnoff has moved into fourth position 100 to 1 chance and so too as, Mun as early them launched they've all got a chance here and six points set led over the second to last bet. He leads from Demar Pegasus, who now leads back. Stop Knock has moved into third, and Commander Zich is fourth. They're coming to the last final fence. One to go in the Grand National. And it's Demar Pegasus, who has a real opportunity to win, take the crown from Tiger O, and he's over it safely. And we've lost one towards the back there, and we've lost. Aman, we've lost Manana Handsome. They're coming to the elbow. It's Jamal Pegasus from Stormlock and Puzzle Sabre and Six Boy Step. This is going to be a terrific race and it's Jamal Pegasus on the far side. They come to the elbow. There's a furlough to go in the national. And Jamal Pegasus is leading from Stormlock. And Stormlock on the near side. He's getting there. He's getting up. It's going to be all so close. Jamal Pegasus on the far side. Stormlock on the near side. And Stormlock is going to get up. And he's going to win by half an the Randall South Grand National! 
And Puzzle Sabre came through to steal third place, but my word, what a finish to the race! You'll never see a finish to a Grand National than that! Wow, we let's look at the replay. We picked them up. One fell on out at the elbow. It looked as if it was Demont Pegasus's race. He thought he had it in the bag, but then Stop Not the 100 to 1 shot has held him off and takes the race and becomes the first 100 to 1 shot to win the Grand National since Point Haven all the way back in 1967. Puzzle Sabre got through to third. And what a finish. You'll not see a finish from that. This is it again. And there was probably half a dead in that, if that. It was almost a dead eat and a photo finish. So there we are. That's the result. Let's run through the SPs for you then before we leave you here at entry. The winner of the Grand National, number 27, Stock Knock at 11, 100 to 1 shot. Demand Progress is his second at 100 to 1. Puzzle Sabre third at 11 to 1. And Stock Knock becomes the first 100 to 1 shot winner of the Grand National since Point Haven back in 1967. What a race, Trev. Well, quite spectacular. A 100 to 1 shot. Stock Knock beating another 100 to 1 shot. Darman Pegasus to win the Grand National by about a snout. Absolutely astonishing finish. It needed a photo finish. It was close to a dead heat. Um, that was a magnificent Grand National. I don't think we've seen anything like that before. It really is just to show you just uh, uh, why this is known as the Sport of Kings. And on the, the uh, sort of day after tragic news as we've had uh, in the world, I'm sure um, something like that will be there to lighten up your hearts. It's absolutely fantastic. And it is going to have to involve us watching this finish again. And this is so close when you look at this uh, in real time, just how it finishes. And from this point, you, you know, you've got Darman Pegasus and Stop Knot. They're both going for this. And it uh, really is a sprint for line. And, you know, credit to the jockey on Stop Knot. He's got just it timed it just right. Perhaps Darman Pegasus uh, uh, pushed a little too far uh, coming through. And uh, in third place, Puzzle Saber. Well, uh, uh, fantastic. Uh, that has been uh, the first 101 shot to win for since 1967. When back there, the disc uh, was presented by Trevor Coleman. Well, I'm pretty sure we called him David back then. Astonishing uh, where we stand and how times have moved. Uh, the closest Grand National for many a year, absolutely sure. Well, we're going to be back, folks. Uh, so stick around in the midweek. We've got Sports Night in the UEFA Champions League quarterfinals. And, of course, Grandstand is back next week with the FA Cup semi-finals. Ah, it's just a special time of year, this. And uh, let us leave you with the final closing moments of an absolutely spectacular Grand National. Bye-bye. Aman with was Manana Hansen. They're coming to the elbow. It's Jamal Pegasus from Stormrock and Puzzle Sabre and six boy step. This is gonna be a terrific race and it's Jamal Pegasus on the far side. They come to the elbow. There's a furlough to go in the national. And Jamal Pegasus is leading from Stormrock and Stormrock on the near side. He's getting there. He's getting up. It's gonna be all so close. Jamal Pegasus on the far side. Stormrock on the near side. And Stormrock is gonna get up. And he's gonna win by half. The Randolph South Grand 